Welcome back. So now we're going to be doing convection. So we're going to be doing the Fe type question for convection. Specifically, convection is the transfer of heat through a fluid, whether it may be a liquid or a gas, caused by molecular motion. So molecular motion in the liquid or a gas. So looking at this Fe type question, we're told we have air that flows at a velocity of 2 meters per second in an 8 centimeter diameter and 7 meter long tube as the tube is subjected to a uniform heat flux from all surfaces. Using the air properties given the below, the heat transfer coefficient is most nearly what? So here we're assuming it's a small change in temperature. That should be said in this question, but let's assume it's small changes in temperature because we have a small tube and a small links for the tube specifically and the diameter being small. So we're going to be looking at small temperature differences and not significant changes in properties for this question. So we're given the Brantle number, we're given the viscosity, our C sub P, and our thermal conductivity, our K value. Again, we want to find the convection heat transfer coefficient. So let's write that down. Find our H value. So this will be our H value, the convection heat transfer coefficient. But before we proceed, we know this H value for convection is going to depend on the Nassault number. So let's do control F in our FE handbook, type in Nassault. And we know this is in the chemical engineering section, but that's fine because it gives us the same equation. And note here, it's turbulent flow in circular tubes. We have a suit, we have a tube, right? So it's going to be this equation, the Nassault number. Our H value, which is what we want to find, times the diameter divided by our thermal conductivity, our K value. So that's the equation, and the end goal is to use this equation. So the main equation here is going to be this. We're going to solve for H. It's going to equal to our K value divided by the diameter times the Nassault number. So before we proceed now, we need to find what? This Nassault number, right? So we need to find it using our handbook specifically for convection. This Nassault number is going to depend on the Reynolds number and the Brantle number. So let's look in the handbook what we mean exactly by that. So go under heat transfer, go down to convection, and you can keep, here we go. So convection, we know it depends on this Nassault number and the Brantle number. The Brantle number is given by this equation. But we want to find the salt number in order to find the, the convection heat transfer coefficient. So that's what we want to find, the salt number. And the way we do this, we know we do not have external flow, right? So this section is out. We have internal flow. Let's go down. So here we go, internal flow. We're in a tube. So what we do, we know this will depend on the Reynolds number. And we have to denote, is this laminar flow? in a circular tube or is it turbulent flow in a circular tube if it's laminar flow we're going to use these equations right if it's turbulent flow we're going to be using these equations so let's find whether it's laminar or turbulent let's go back to our notebook so first step we know to find the reynolds number the reynolds number i'm going to use this equation is the velocity times the diameter divided by our kinematic viscosity. So we're given the kinematic viscosity. So let's use this Reynolds number equation. This should be memorized to save you time on the FE exam if you have the chance. So our velocity is what? 2 meters per second, right? 2 meters per second. Our diameter is going to be 8 centimeters. We convert it to meters, so 0 0.08 meters. And the kinematic viscosity is this value, right? No, sorry, this one. So it's 1.562 times 10 to the negative 5 meters squared per second. So now we can solve for the Reynolds number. And if you do the math for that, I got around 10,243. 10,243.27. And we know this is greater than, so it's just above. 10,000. That means we are turbulent. Turbulent. We have turbulent flow. So in this pipe, we have a tube essentially, and we're given the diameter here. 
the diameter of this tube is 0 0.08 meters, right? We have a velocity flown, which is 2 meters per second, and we're going to have turbulent flow. So it's flow that's turbulent. So it's more complex flow. So we have turbulent flow, so let's go back to the handbook. We know we're not going to use these equations. These are out. And if we had laminar flow, it would have been below 2300. That's important to denote. So we have turbulent flow, it's above 10,000, and we know that to use these equations, we have to have the Reynolds number above 10,000 for turbulent flow in circular tubes. So which equation do we use? So the difference between these two is the top one is used for small to moderate temperature differences. We're assuming that in this case. It's not denoted in the question, but we're going to assume that for this question. This equation would be used for large property variations. So significant property variations. This is also denoted by this very large range for the Brantle number, right? This is from 0 0.7 to 160. This is from 0 0.7 to 16,700. So our Brantle number for this question, if we go, it's 0 0.7297. It's barely above 0 0.7. This should automatically give us a sign, hey, this is not even close, like not even, it's very low on this end compared to the 16,000. So we know we're going to have these small to moderate temperature differences in this range. This is the equation that we will use. So we're using this equation. We know the Reynolds number is above 10,000. Our L over D ratio, what's our L over D ratio? That's going to be above 10 for sure, because if we do it here, our L over D, let me just do it real quick. The L is 7 meters, right? It's a 7 meter long tube. The diameter is 0 0.08. And we can do 7 over 0 0.08. It's 87.5 meter. Uh, the ratio, it's 87.5. So that's well above the 10, so we're fine. We can use that equation. These conditions are satisfied. We're going to use this equation. Find the salt number. With the salt number, we can find what? Our convection heat transfer coefficient. So let's do that. Let's find the salt number. Step number two. The salt number is going to be 0 0.023. We take the Reynolds number raised to the 4 over 5, which is 0 0.8, right? Times the Brantle number to the n power. What's n? So I didn't talk about that. This n value is going to be 0 0.4 for heating. Here it says it. And 0 0.3 for cooling. So we have heating here. So it's going to be 0 0.4. So we have 0 0.4 for the n value. So let's write that down. n is going to equal to 0 0.4 because we have heating. This is in the handbook. Okay, so now we solve for the Nassault number, 0 0.023. The Reynolds number is what we found here. So 10,243.27 times, this is raised to the power of 4 over 5, which is 0 0.8. And this is times the Brantle number, which is given as 0 0.7296. So this is given as 0 0.7296 raised to the 4 power. Don't forget the, the raised to the 0 0.4. Sorry. Don't forget that. 0 0.4. So solve for the salt number. And I got around 32.7576. So we're almost done. Last step is to solve for our H value, the convection heat transfer coefficient, using this equation, right? So we'll just use that. Our H value. Is going to be our k over d times the salt number so our h value our k value is 0 0.02551 and the units for that is what watt per meter kelvin watt per meter kelvin i suggest you always keep your units so you can cancel things out at the end and our diameter is 0 0.08 right the diameter of the tube is 0.08 meters. 
So we have that, and the salt number is going to be this, right? What we found. So this, seven, six. So now we can solve for H. So what do we have? It's a watt, a meter, meter. These don't cancel because this meter is going to be down here, right? Don't get that confused. They're not going to cancel. They're going to get multiplied. So it's going to be h if you do the math for all of this it's around 10.44 and we do watt per meter squared kelvin this is our h value which is the convection heat transfer coefficient and it should be b so that's all hope this helps let me know if you have questions take care